How's it going, guys? Welcome back to the Blue Shifting, and welcome back to Feta Morgana. Uh, or the Fata. Like, someone sent me, like, how you're supposed to say it, and I think it was, like, Fata, but it, it doesn't look right. Is that right? Fata Morgana. Fa Fata Morgana. Fata Morgana. Okay, I think that's right. Fata Morgana. Because it's, uh, I think everyone was saying it was Italian, where I didn't really know, like, what culture we were dealing with, but it sounds like it's Italy. So, Fata Morgana. Welcome back. <laughs> we had a fantastic first episode last time. Um, one of the few times where uh, the first episodes already got me kind of hooked, where things were going... I, at first I was like, okay, well, what's this? What's this? What's this? But, like, I mean, white hair girls captured my attention, for sure. She seems super interesting and, and really pretty. But, uh... Uh, <laughs> yeah, we're going to talk to her a little bit, hopefully, get us to know what her story is, how she relates to the house, and just everything in general. Um, for such an old title, they really did a good job of capturing an atmosphere and crafting a story, and it's only been part one, so, like, I'm sure it's going to be good. And some of you have actually been telling me that it's one of the best games you've ever played, which is the same kind of stuff I was hearing about Mub Love. So, you've set the bar high, people. But I don't think I'll be too disappointed. I mean, I freaking love visual novels. So if this is a visual novel that's really, really good, then I'm going to love it. Oh, man. Um, so once again, we'll be subjected to my voice acting skills, which are not so great, especially because I'll be able to voice a lot of girls. And I'm not great at voicing girl characters, but I'm better than a lot of other people might be. Um, I would love to go into voice acting at some point. So <laughs> I feel like these are going to be testaments against my skill. I have to actually like practice and like maybe get some training or something, but... I'd love to be featured in, a, in like a visual novel, maybe the background character. I'd really love to be able to make some main roles in any kind of game or, or anything. And I think if one of my dreams would be to be actually skilled enough to be able to do voice acting like professionally. I just don't think that's ever going to happen, but we'll see. Regardless, enjoy my pittance that I offer for you. <laughs> um, I guess uh, I, I don't think there's really a whole lot else I'm going to say except for the fact that while I don't think she's inherently dangerous, she may be a vampire, but if she's not a vampire, I'm not sure she's really going to be the problem. I feel like she might be bringing trouble with her, but I don't know if she will be the source of that trouble. So I guess we'll have to figure out what happens next. Just dive right in, I suppose, on this very, very stormy evening. All right, white-haired girl doesn't say anything in response. Is something the matter? No, I just thought I felt someone watching us. <laughs> it's only your imagination, I'm sure. Mm. If not your imagination, then perhaps some unseen force was watching you. Unseen force? Are you familiar with how people refer to this mansion? Rose Manor. Yes, indeed. It is called Rose Manor because you can smell the sweet fragrance of the Rose Garden even at a great distance. But that is not what I meant. Hmm. It is said that the that a witch resides within the house. A witch? I have not heard of such stories. You probably wouldn't have. It was a very, very long time ago. Nothing you need to concern yourself with. Um... Then why is it being brought up, uh, Missy? You have a, a peculiar presence about you. She's the witch. She's the witch. That would explain how she... Like, yeah, ooh, she actually would be a fantastic witch. Like, I can see it. It actually makes sense. Should I consider that a compliment? <laughs> it's getting late. You should get some rest. A room has already been set aside for you. But first... May I ask you one thing? Yes? I do not believe you have given me your name yet. My name? My name is... We don't even get to know. G. L. Mel? Who's Mel? Oh, yeah, that's the... Oh, the brother. That's right. How did I forget that? Wake up! Get up, Mel! What? Huh? It's morning. 
You disappoint me, dear smell. It's very much long. It's, it's, it's very much long since morning. I don't. That was phrased weird. I didn't see you at breakfast, so I came to find out what was the matter. I've really been sleeping that long. And father's too leaning on you, dear smell. Oversleeping is hardly proper behavior for a firstborn son. I I know. But before that. Yes, dearest Mel. What are you doing in here? You can't just go prancing into a boy's bed chambers. Leave that to the servants. I did send one for you. You're the one who refused to wake up. Besides, it's not like we're strangers. We used to sleep together all the time. That was long ago. Things are different now. Oh, you're overthinking it, silly. Now hurry up. Out of bed, sleepyhead. Alright, alright, I'm getting up. So you can see yourself out. Oh my, you look awful, dear smell. You're someone who overslept. You look like you didn't get a wink last night. You, you think so? You didn't go out in the town last night, did you? Naughty, naughty boy. I, 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 I would never. You know that? You sneak, you squeaked. I don't think I believe you. I didn't go out last night or anything. I'm tired because you had me playing cards until late, Nelly. Hey, we weren't playing for that long. Besides, look at me, I got up just fine. A anyway, shoo. I can't get dressed with you in here. Fine, I'm leaving. Whew. Oh, I almost forgot, dearest Mel. What, what now? Come on, no need to be mean. I'm sure you'll be quite surprised at the news. Oh. The breakfast, which you missed, father told us. Told you what? Do I really want to say? It sounds like you want me out of your room, dearest Mel. Oh, she's such a player. Please, Nelly. <laughs> we got a new maid today, from a house we have ties to, supposedly. I've never seen anyone like her before. We're supposedly coming from a good family. She isn't very graceful, and I've never seen her at social gatherings. But that's not the surprising part. Does that mean... She's peculiar. Has a very unusual appearance, that one. Have white hair? What? How did you know that, dear smell? Uh, thanks, Nelly. Oh, he's super excited. Oh, he's smitten. Hey, get back here. Oh, for goodness sake, what's gotten into him? The... At the time, the majority of the... At the time, the majority of servants of the mansion were men. However, the ladies of the house all had Abigails, so there were several women servants, myself included. The maids, by and large, were selected from daughters of other esteemed families. It was, you could say, a sort of training before they enter society. Interesting, so they're all noble women, so that's not too uncommon. And if she is from a prominent house of vampires, maybe, then she would technically be considered nobility, which means that she would be, it wouldn't be a sca too much of a scandal for him to marry her. Um, I would normally say that her, his father may object to it, but he seems to be fairly comfortable with his son exploring his own future, so... If he found a girl he fell in love with and it was of a noble house, he probably would approve. But he may know things about the white-haired girl that we don't, and that could be uh, that could make him maybe resistant to this idea. The girls would serve a house even more powerful than their own. When the white-haired girl Mel saw Mel, the white-haired girl Mel saw the night before was one such maid. When he heard this, Mel could not sit still any longer. Oh, uh, I didn't really think this through, did I? I don't even know where she is. I'm guessing she's probably Mother's Maid. White hair. It has to be the girl from last night. But deep down, he was, deep down, he was having difficulty believing the young woman he had seen in the previous night was truly here to be a servant. And can you blame him? When he saw her, she was an absolute mess. Hardly what you would envision from a girl of class. But he did not seek her to find out whether that was true. 
He merely wanted to see her once more, to ascertain whether what he had witnessed the previous night was real or his imagination. And he wanted to have an actual conversation with her. Sure, that's all he wanted. I don't want to run into Mother. That would be awkward. He was heading toward his mother's bedchamber, but the closer he drew, the heavier each step grew. He rounded a corner, debating whether or not to head back, and stopped in his tracks. Dun, dun, dun! Here she is. On, oc on occasion, wishes do come true. When Mel turned the corner, he saw her. The same girl, the same white hair. Wow. Uh, she, appeared to, she appeared to be cleaning the hallway. She traced along the wooden carvings lining the walls, making certain not to miss even a speck of dust. The girl who wore a pristine dress, the uniform of the mansion's Abigail's. It's fascinating because, like, she's, like, obviously kind of proficient. It's her first day, but she's already, like, getting it done right. I probably couldn't dust nearly that good, and I've been asked to dust my whole life. <laughs> there were no longer any filth to obscure her beauty. All that covered her pu all that had covered her pure white hair and glass-like skin was no longer. The one thing that had not changed was her lidless ruby eyes. Listless ruby eyes. Not lidless, that'd be creepy. Pa pardon me. I have to admit, I'd be quite s I would find her captivating myself as far as looks goes. Holy crap. Hearing his, hearing his footsteps, the young woman raised her head. She caught Mel's gaze for a brief moment, merely blinked at him in silence. Lord Mel, yes? Your father informed me of you. D did he? I guess I didn't need to introduce myself then. I believe she made an attempt to smile, though it was difficult to tell. She quickly dropped her gaze back to the floor. Flax and Ruby met only for the briefest moment. Oh, that's a clip. That's a cute way to, to say that they uh, locked eyes for a second. She seemed to be looking at both someone and no one at all. Everyone here truly has the most beautiful colored hair. Did you have business with the mistress, Lord Bell? I can let her know, if you would like. No, I was looking for you. For me? Mel felt as though all the blood in his body began to flow backwards. <laughs> he, could not have, he could not effectively describe the sensation, but in a word, it resembled panic. On his way to find her, Mel had come up with a number of subjects he wanted to talk about, and he generally had a little trouble speaking with others. He'd had less experience interacting with women, and this was true, but the time he'd spent around Nellie had kept him from stumbling too much. Until then... Y yes f for you! Why would you be looking for me, Lord Mel? I, I was wondering how you were doing. Pardon? I'm I'm quite I'm I'm quite fine. Good, good. That's great to hear. Yeah, it sounds like me. <laughs> you fool, Mel. What do you say? That also sounds like me. <laughs> you have more important things to ask, like where she came from, or to tell her she has pretty hair and eyes. But I don't want to trouble her too much. Lord Mel. Yes. Sorry, you just suddenly fell silent. Was I um in your way? I, in my way? No, not at all. What are you up to? I can almost see him like awkwardly like trying to like, like he puts out his, like, his arm to like lean on the wall but like kind of stumbles a bit and he's like, you know, just being as awkward as ever. Oh, it's so cute. Uh, I'm cleaning? Oh, well, yeah, I just didn't need to ask. Ah, you're cleaning. Oh, this is painful. Oh, no. Alright, abort, abort. We'll try again later. <laughs> oh, uh, you can just let the other servants take care of the cleaning. You're one of the noble's daughters we took in, right? Then why is mother making... No, I'm... I'm doing this because I want to. I want to. Uh, I try to do a very breathy, airy kind of voice. I feel like... She seems to me to be the person who, if she had a voice, she would have a voice that almost seems tremulous, almost as if she's about to take flight. But it's hard for me to do that voice consistently, so I'm, I'm apologize. I'm gonna keep trying, but it may not be consistent. The mistress appeared to be busy. I could not simply be idle. Ooh, good work ethic. Very impressive. But 
I enjoy cleaning. I'm in love. <laughs> nah, it's okay. I just, like, I don't know. I think there's something special about people who can be in a situation where they have privilege, but they also do appreciate hard work. Uh, something that draw uh, that draws me to people. And it's funny because, like, I can kind of sometimes be lazy when it comes to some chores, but, like, I, t I typically have, like, when push comes to shove, I take a task, I tackle it, and I see it done, and I move on. I like to do my work before I play. Like, there's always, there's always exceptions. I'm not always the best at household chores, per se, but most of the time, I love that drive, and I have, I like, I like... I like having that drive and I like seeing that drive in other people, so she's awesome. Well, if you say so. Say, um, <laughs> yesterday, this mansion is truly a thing of beauty. All the many roses in the garden, even the furnishing has had a great deal of thought put into it. This family must have a wonderful sense of aesthetic. Oh, yeah, yeah thanks. Did she just change the subject on me? Yeah, probably. I'm delighted to have been given an opportunity to serve in such a magnificent house. Mother and father actually had nothing to do with that. Not even the garden. That's all been around since my grandfather's time. This mansion was a complete wreck when he bought it. Oh, was it? Yeah, frankly. I'm surprised he actually paid, put, paid money for it. The chandelier in the foyer was shattered and only half attached to the ceiling. Most of the decorations on the wall were broken. I can hardly imagine. This is a marvelous, impressive house. <laughs> I'm sure you'd be flattered to hear it. My grandfather was a bit of an eccentric. He liked to do things people didn't expect just to watch the looks of the surprises on their face. He was the kind of man who would buy a mansion that was beyond repair just to give it a completely new life. Everyone who had seen the property before it was renovated was astonished. They regretted not taking the opportunity themselves, seeing the transformation it underwent. <laughs> huh? I was just thinking, you're kind of like this house. That we get odd things like, what do you mean by that? I mean, when you first arrived? Oh, uh, no, never mind, forget it. She'll figure out you were peeping on her, stupid. She already probably knows! <laughs> She hasn't yet, has she? Yes. I, I, it's nothing. The more I think about it, you and the mansion aren't really comparable. Oh. That was a weird little sound, I'm sorry. The truth is, it's being a rundown mess isn't the only reason nobody wanted to buy the house. They say. Oh, fetch, that didn't look good. That all who dwelleth in this house shall be met with misfortune. Do you believe it? Why would she believe that? I... <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's not actually true. It's all rumors and hearsay embellished to make the tale more exciting. The rumors only started because of how I used to look. If the mansion truly begot misfortune, then we wouldn't still be here. And it, wouldn't exp and it wouldn't explain how my grandfather died. Do you know how he passed away? No. How did he die? Is that a lovely lady? Really? Really? <laughs> what? <laughs> that was what? Believe it or not, that was how he died. Together with a young, beautiful woman. Fetch, man. What a way to go. What a way to go, bro. What a way to go. His time ran out while he was making love to her, they say. A uh, rather crude way to go. Just casual first time conversations, right? Like, it's like, what do you do? You meet a pretty girl, you like stumble over your words. Next thing you know, I was like, my grandfather died having sex. Yeah, it sounded like a plan. <laughs> so stupid. But he was hardly unfortunate. But he was hardly misfortunate. What did what I tell you? Ah, yes. Just so you know, I uh, I promise I didn't inherit my grandfather's pr promis pr pr propensity for such base behavior. <laughs> oh dear, this guy. <laughs> he, he needs some help. He needs a lifeline, man. Got you, Belle. I'll be there for you, bro. Just like, 
Just stop what you're doing and move forward. I am pure body and spirit, dedicated wholly to my studies, so... <laughs> hey, she laughed. <laughs> I'm out. She's laughing at you. <laughs> my apologies. No, it's fine. Uh, any, anyway, we were talking about the mansion, right? I've always thought it was kind of a strange place myself. The dress you're wearing, it was found here after my grandfather bought it. Why? Why would you follow that up with that story? Oh, gosh, darn it. We don't see that kind of designer on these parts, so I'm guessing it was probably imported. The architecture is really old-fashioned, too, which must have caught Grandfather's eye. When he announced his plan to buy it, the entire family opposed his decision, but he refused to budge. Renovation upon renovation gave the mansion new life, but, his old, but, but for all his work, he was most fond of the roses in the garden. He collected species from all around the world, and every time he got a new one, he would summon gardeners to arrange and grow them. It took incredibly long to complete. There were even some that wouldn't grow in the climate of this land, but Grandfather refused to give in. He truly loved roses. It's like she knew him. I wonder if she knew him. I wonder if he died... Oh, that would be awkward. Like, what if she was the one... Like, if she was an immortal being, it'd be possible that she could have been that person. I don't think so. But that would be really awkward, wouldn't it? <laughs> I mean, I don't really get to how someone could be so imp impassionate about them. It's just embarrassing every time someone calls this house Rose Manor. Perhaps... Perhaps the roses were meant for someone. What? I'm simply speculating. Roses make wonderful gifts, after all. Indeed, they do. If you like roses as much as Nelly, then you're welcome to go see them for yourself. Pick as many as you'd like. If anyone asks, just say I gave you permission. I... Don't be shy. I'm sure it'll get tiring after all your work is done. No, I just... I'm, uh, sensitive to sunlight. Bam! Frickin' pyre! Oh, that's unusual. Perhaps that explains why you're so pale. I had no idea. That sounds rough. And your skin is so pretty, too. Oh, Mel. You don't seem terribly surprised. What? Oh, I'm very much surprised. Or would you prefer a more dramatic response? N no, I, I just... I expected you to find it disturbing. I'm sensitive to sunlight and can hardly spend any time outside. That makes me sound like some kind of demonic creature. <laughs> huh? Oh, you worry too much. There's not a monster in the world as sweet as you. Well, there you go with the honey-coated lines. But once again, this is one of those things where it's like... If she finds him interesting and slash attractive slash, like, like fascinating, it'll come across really well. If she thinks he's being kind of weird, this is a creepy thing to say. Flirting is, flirting is a balancing on that knife edge between, like, cute and creepy. Ah! Yes? Are the other maids teasing you, perhaps? The black-haired one especially. She's, how should I put it, a little frightening? Almost as if she has a steel heart or something. She's impenetrable. Right, she's one of Mother's maids too, isn't she? Now I'm even more worried. Since you refuse to follow my instructions, you are henceforth Hellspawn. I can imagine her saying that. <laughs> oh, and again. Now that one actually I think was genuine. I I'm very sorry. No need to apologize. In fact, I wish you'd laugh more. Um, she's actually very kind to me. And everything she does, she does with incredible precision and efficiency. She looks so young, and yet she has such skill. How long has she been here in the mansion? Actually, uh, I, she's been here for quite some time. I don't know exactly how long. No one knows how old she is. It's kind of creepy. I, I have never once considered her such. Sorry, you're right. It's bad manners to speak ill of others. Either way, she still scares me. It's like there's no light in her eyes, or like her smiles are all faked. Doesn't make her any less pretty, though. 
Ah, uh, my conversation's died! I have to think of something else to talk about. Um. Uh. Uh. Oh, uh, yes! You can ask me anything. Does the master, your father, Lord Nell, often retire from the mansion? I have not seen him around. Oh, yeah, father frequently returns home. The mansion is actually quite our secondary home. Why do you ask, though? I was just curious. Nothing more. Mm. Oh. Um. Uh. Yes. What is it? One of the maids asked to see me, so I should be on my way. If you'll excuse me. What? Uh. uh all right. See you later then. Goodbye. Oh, right. One moment. Since you're sensitive to the sun, I can pick some roses from time to time for you. F for you to decorate your room. Lord Mel. Th th that's all. So sorry for holding you up. Oh, why am I so bad at this? <laughs> to be real, my friend, though, we all are. In our own way. She definitely thinks I'm obnoxious. Ugh, I wanted to hide under a rock. I wanted to reserve time and try this over again. <laughs> the technology, we could do that, but I think it's fine. Roses are not becoming of me. He is too kind. Mm -hmm. Something very odd about her, for sure. I'm real excited to see what, though. Ooh. <laughs> She and herself might be unlike, uh, might maybe may be like a rose with her thorns. She absolutely has the whole like, like I'm almost thinking now she might not actually be a vampire because it feels too on the head for them to mention that she can't go outside. <laughs> like, it's like it's like it's so vampire like. It's like it's too obvious. It's like hmm, I wonder what's actually going on. You have my thanks, father, and I apologize for being late today. Now there's something unusual. You're not being punctual. Maybe next we'll go a whole month without rain. <laughs> Do you have mercy on next year's crops, Mel? You hyperbolize, father. Is that a word? <laughs> so, did something nice happen? Huh? You look like you're in good spirits. D Do I? I, I n nothing. Hmm. Something, something did happen, didn't it? I, I, it's all over my face, isn't it? Phrasing. <laughs> People prefer an open book to a face of stone. So it is. People may prefer it, but it's not a good trait to force social engagements. What? <laughs> not that kind of engagements. You'll be ha not the kind of engagements you'll be having anyway. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. That's do I look so dejected. For now, I have at least, so there's nothing wrong with that. So tell me, what have you in such a joyous mood now? You torment me so, father. We've taken on another maid. You know how that goes, right? Someone new comes, things get lively for a while. All the excitement has gotten to me, that's all. Oh, ho, ho. why are you looking at me like that? No reason, no reason. <laughs> so, so, what family does the little lady come from? Oh, uh, I don't actually know. You don't know? I was going to ask her, but I missed my chance. Father has returned home, and I can't speak to mother. I see. She's caught your eye, hasn't she? Yeah, she has. But the truth is, you're more than just interested in her, are you not? What? No, I... <laughs> <laughs> you truly do enjoy tormenting me. Well, I should be getting home now. Mel. Yes? Make certain you find out where she came from. If you're genuinely interested in her... It's your responsibility to determine if she's actually suitable for you. Thank you, and excuse me. 
Mm. That. Does it matter if she's from the Steen family or not? No! I'm not in love with her. I'm just interested. This isn't love. No. It couldn't be. I, I, this is me we're talking about. Besides, I hardly even know her. Young sire. Yes, a young sire. Alms for the poor. It's the same beggar as before. I don't think he's moved since then. But he looks skinnier than last time. He's gonna have trouble making it through the summer. I should give him something while I still have the chance. Alms for the poor. Have mercy. Sorry, but this is all I have to give you. Oh, thank you very much. Blessings upon you. May the Lord bless your soul, young Zaya. Thanks. I feel bad for him, but it's just the way of the world. Farewell. Mel's a good person. He really is. The skies are really clear. The sun shone fiercely down on the the sun. Sh hey. <clears throat> the sun shone fiercely down on the road town that day. As was characteristic of the area, cloudy days and rain were frequent during this season. But the sun almost always took the stage a day after a storm. The cathedral standing tall in the center of town, the stone paved streets clacking with the pleasant sound of footsteps, the people peeping out from beneath awnings to look up at the sky. In Mel's eyes, it was as if they were all blessed by divine light. Hmm. However, not everyone living in the same land was equally blessed. In fact, the blessed were far outnumbered by the forsaken. Even if their time would later come to be referred to as the Golden Age. Interesting. Elsewhere, back at the mansion, Nellie was causing trouble for the Abigails. On a whim, she decided to redecorate her bedchamber, so she gathered the maids and put them to work, shouting orders and demands and complaints. And she had not summoned only her personal servants, but others as well, including the white-haired girl. No! Not like that! How many times must I tell you? The tapestry goes by the door! And I don't like the carpet's pattern. Is there anything else we can change it with? Hey, who put this ugly face here? Nellie appeared to be and they appeared to be rather irritated, and it was the servants who bore the brunt of her frustration. Though they found similar of the similarly vexing, none of them showed it. Good service. She was a girl who spoke her mind, a trait particular to that time in history. Women of the Golden Age were so vivacious, in fact, that it inspired parody and satire in foreign countries. But no matter how hands-off her parents were, had Nellie been born a generation earlier or a generation later, she likely would not have been able to act so free-spirited. That day, however, Nellie did, see did not seem to be her usual self. Though she always spoke her mind, it really went beyond being childishly adorable. It was unusual to see her in such a foul mood, not even a smile on her face. I think she has a pretty pretty severe brother complex and she's already worried. Ugh, get rid of it all! The carpet, the chairs, the desk, it's all so ugly! Don't we have anything better? If we don't, then order it. Have it made! You can do that much, can't you? Hurry up and replace them! Having only arrived that morning, the white-haired girl was unsure what she was supposed to be doing, caught in the middle of a flurry of maids and furniture and fabric. She chased, she chased frantically, scrambling Abigail's with her eyes, and made attempts to help, but not being familiar with the work, she only ended up getting in their way. She probably felt that everyone would be better off with her not in the room. So when the maids ordered to get new furniture made their way out of Nellie's room, she attempted to follow them. You, hold on a second. Yes, yo, yes, with the white hair. However, Nellie stopped before her, before she could take her leave. What? The white-haired girl turned back, bewildered to find Nellie smiling at her. The corners of her mouth turned up in a self-assured grin. There was no trace of timidity or uncertainty in her demeanor. Her fat flax and eyes seemed like they would look nice under the light of the sun. A light, under the light of the sun, almost the exact opposite of the white-haired girl. <laughs> I, my voice trailed into my normal, uh, uh, I don't know, is it falsetto? Falsetto, I think, is when you are changing your normal pitch. I don't know what the normal setto would be. I want to talk to you, actually. My mother never was one to share. I asked her to trade maids, but she wouldn't have it. Tra 
made? You, you made for me. <laughs> Which is why I decided to completely redecorate my room. Because then I would need some extra hands. But, but why? Because mother and father refused to tell me anything. Why is that? Who are you exactly? Where did you come from? Tell me, what house are you from? Uh, I... Why can't you tell me? If we took you in, you must be from a fairly decent family. As a member of the Rhodes family, I have a right to know. Do I not? You can't expect me to welcome a girl into my home who won't even tell me where she came from. I don't know anything about you. I haven't seen you at any parties. I, I'm... I came from another country. Another country? What country? Somewhere very, very far away. Oh. North of here? East? West? South? Uh, um... South. It's south of here. I crossed the sea to get here, which is why we've never met before. Hmm. How far did you have to travel then? How many times did the sun rise? How many stormy nights did you face? Uh, innumerable days and nights we sailed, heading even further north. Huh. So tell me. Oh, uh, Lady Nelly, that's the most wonderful painting. She just tried she just tried to brush me off. I won't let her get away that easy. Painting? It's in my room, so of course it's wonderful. But that's that one's especially so. You're, so. you're both so adorable. You, Lady Nelly, the Lord Mel. <laughs> How old were you when it was painted? Huh? Ah, oh, that painting! Goodness, yes, who could I for art? <laughs> it is magnificent, isn't it? This was done when I was four and Mel was seven. You see how we're standing next to each other, holding hands? I was too young to remember it very well, but Mel looks like he was really embarrassed. I was standing there like statues made for boring painting. Nellie, Nellie explained brightly. Having completely forgotten, she was pressed up against the white-haired girl. She did a little twirl, stopping the face of the portrait. Though many paintings lined the walls of her room, Nellie was most fond of this one, and her, uh, her and her brother. Two darling siblings standing side by side, the older brother smiling kindly and the younger sister sweetly tilting her head, her cheeks the color of a fresh, pick, freshly picked apples. It was like a very embodiment of their happiness. A painting lays its subjects bare, you know? Fortune and misfortune, happiness and sorrow, enshrined on a canvas for all to see. And this reflection is not merely limited to the point of time it was made, either. Did you know, Master, the paintings are alive? No. They are drawn with a brush over an extended stretch of time, unlike photographs which capture a single moment. The two have their own individual merits, but a, photo a photograph is still while the painting moves. Portraits reveal both the past and the present state of those they depict. <laughs> and then I have always been close. I would sing songs for him. He would teach me about all sorts of things. He's so smart. Nowadays, Mel hardly even goes for walks without with me, making excuses like, I'm an adult now, but we used to spend a lot of time playing together in the rose garden. I see. The white-haired gr white girl normally had difficulty smiling, but her lips naturally curled upward as Nellie reminisced. A vision of the two happy siblings had probably swelled up in her mind. And I imagine there was a faint trace of envy in her heart as well. Lady Nellie, you love Lord Mel quite deeply, I see. Yes, of course I do. Mel's smart. He's so studious. He's incredibly kind. For my birthday, he gave me this wonderful rose necklace. The jewelry shop he got it from is famous because even the royal family makes co commissions from their workshop. So he had to order it months in advance. Just for me. <laughs> He's a prince. Oh? <laughs> He's pretty charming, wouldn't you say? That's why I call him my prince. But you know what? Mel is a terrible dancer. And he hasn't gotten his feet on the ground yet, so he's bad at interacting with girls. So there's no one else who would say that about him. He is quite the gentleman. I assume women will be drawn to him. Gentlemen? Have you met Mel already? This morning, briefly. 
Uh oh, she knows now. That reminds me, Mel seemed to know about her too. Um, what do you think about Mel? I, uh, as I said, he's a gentleman. That's not what I mean. Don't think I'll let you get away with putting any funny ideas in his head. What? Mel is too trusting. He's pure of heart, so I won't stand for you trying to take advantage of him. I, I would never. So you say, but you actually want to get close to him. I, I wouldn't dream of it, Lady Nelly. He, he is a man far beyond my reach. You aren't planning on doing anything, are you? Not at all. And you don't have any romantic feelings for him, do you? What? Um, well, do you? I have no romantic feelings for him, Lady Millie. And you won't develop any? I will not. And with, and with that, Nellie gave a wide, satisfied grin. Even though no one has a way of knowing how another truly feels, or how they might in the future. <laughs> you wouldn't, would you? Now that I think about it, there are plenty of other boys. You're getting together with Mal is downright absurd. It, indeed. Ah, uh, but anyway, back to what we were talking about earlier. Your family, I almost forgot. I, um... You haven't told me exactly where you came from or anything about your... What? <clears throat> Abigail, who's... Oh, is that just one of the other maids? Lady Nelly, I bought a new carpet. Just look at the embroidery. The work of a true artisan. Simply, I love it. I am simply in love with it. Surely you will find it to your liking as well? Wow, you're right. It's a Florentine stitch, isn't it? I wonder whether someone mimicked the style or if it was imported. Either way, a great find. Let's hurry and get it laid out. Oh, and we have to hurry to see how the colors go with everything else. We have to finish redecorating quickly so I can show Mel. He'll be so surprised. What wonderful, what wonderful taste you have, Nellie. <laughs> hmm. When the other Abigails returned, so too did the bus bustle within Nellie's room. As the white-haired girl watched, a faint smile crossed her lips. Perhaps it was from relief to having escaped Nellie's inqu inquisition. inquisition. Yeah. Or perhaps... <clears throat> ah, Nellie, I'm back. Did you eat something? You're not supposed to, dearest Mel. You're unusually cheerful. I'm the same as always. Anyway, never mind that, dearest Mel. Take a look at my room. I redecorated today. So that's what you've been doing, hiding away in the house all day. Nellie? How is that any different from what you were doing? You were in the church all day. I, I guess. I will look in your room, I promise. But first, uh, do you know where the new maid is? No bueno. Hmm. Now, now, don't get any strange ideas. I just haven't yet had the chance to introduce myself, and I thought I should as a member of the family. Except you have, and I know it. Being the eldest son, it would be shameful if she were to pass me in the halls not even knowing who I am, so... Don't ask me. What? But you were in the house all day. She attends to Mother, so why would I know where she is? Though, she did help Doug redecorate my room. You made her help. You must work for the maid, man, men servants. There's no reason to make the maids do it. Oh, so you're saying I should invite a bunch of men into my room? I'll go into- I go into your room all the time, Nellie. And you were just in my bedchamber just this morning. Only one man is allowed in my bedroom, dearest Mel, and that is you. So unless you become a servant, which I will not stand for, I will not ask them for any help. Oh, Nellie, you ought to be a little more... A little more what? If you're going to lecture me, I won't hear it. What am I going to do with you, my little lady? What? What? What are you looking at me like that for? We talked about... We talked about you, dearest Mel. And I'm not going to tell you what she said. About me? What did she say? Hmm. Please, Nellie. She said... She said she has no romantic interest in you. Well, why did that even come up? Because we're both girls. We talk about things like boys when, we're, when we like, when there's the most, when who's the most handsome. 
Why do you look so downtrodden, dearest Mel? That's kind of a sneaky, tricky tactic. You look sad, like a sad little boy. You can't get a, a gay crush to notice him. My face, my face is unbecoming of a prince, Mel. Are you interested in her? That's strange. You haven't even met. I, I am not. It's just depressing to find that somebody you've never even met doesn't like you. That's all. Oh, man. Oh, fetch! If I'm gonna make my move, I must do it soon. Do so soon. I don't have much time. The master of this house isn't around, so next in line would be him. That painting. Ooh, there's something really sneaky about her. What on earth is she up to? Oh, oh, oh is it chills up my back? Shows you normally be going after the master of the house, but since he's not around very often, she's gonna go after Mel. And, she, and Mel, she'll play him like a fiddle. Interesting. I think that's where we're gonna end for today. A little bit shorter, but like that's such a really bombshell to drop at the very end. Dang. Whoo. So yeah, she's is some kind of predator, it seems like. She has some kind of very, like, she has something she has to do. What could she possibly need to do in a short timetable that involves a male of the household? Next in line, maybe is she trying to secure a marriage? Maybe like a position? I don't think so. I think there's something more going on here. Something beyond what we can see on the surface, so... I'm sure we'll find things out, but yeah, there's definitely something very, very interesting happening right now. Ooh. Well, that was interesting. So thank you so much for joining me today for this fascinating look. I have a feeling that the thumbnails are going to be tough to come up with for this game, but I'll do the best I can, dang it. Um, but yeah, no, I still actually, I, call me crazy, I still like the right haired girl. She's the most interesting person I've so far. Um, even though I think she's gonna end up like, eating somebody's soul or something. <laughs> but, well, like, no, I, I'm gonna lean onto the vampire thing a little bit at least. I think there's definitely a big part of that, of that, that of her story that's involving, like, it just seems too much like a vampire. I don't have any idea why she would need a specific person as a vampire, but, uh, fascinating. Ooh, it's so cool. And the music's so, so good for this. It's so interesting. But yeah, so I guess next time we'll see, now that we have this kind of triangle of love slash hate that's going on, where um, we have Nelly who's got the brother complex and wants uh, Mel all to herself. White haired girl who's coming in who has an ulterior motive that involves Mel. Mel's infatuated with white haired girl. So Nelly's gonna be trying to save her brother, though she doesn't even realize she actually would be saving him from whatever white haired girl wants. I wonder what her name is. I'm really curious. But fascinating, fascinating stuff. Oh, this is really like this story keeps giving me hooks. Like there's every it's like it's like this is the second time and I'm already like even more invested in figuring out what's going on. So thank you again for those who recommended it. And thank you so much for being here today. It's a pleasure having you. I hope that we have more to talk about as the story progresses and that like there's more interesting subjects that keep getting brought up. For instance, I guess if I were to ask you guys a question, what do you think about this concept of, of love at first sight? Like, I can definitely believe in a strong infatuation at first sight, but I feel like you have to get to know somebody if you want to actually call it love. I don't think you can truly love somebody without spending time with them, and especially you have to go through trials together, which is why relationships are really important. You have to be in stressful situations where you both have to problem solve, work together, make compromises for each other. Like, that's a critical part of a relationship and a future relationship, like one where you can like make and keep commitments with each other. I think that that's so important. So I guess, like, what are your views on that? And have you ever experienced that where you like you saw somebody and you instantly had a powerful connection with them? I actually have. I had that happen to me one time where like I instantly knew that I wanted to ask that person out. Actually, no, twice. It has happened twice. So like one was halfsies. One was a bit of halfsy. So maybe uh, if you're interested, let me know in the comments and I'll tell you about that next time. But for now, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you so much for sharing your time with me as always. Until the next video, watch me or have to see me in next. I'll see you there.